that combines meditation, breathing, postures, and poses to make a connection with mind, body, and spirit. There has been some evidence, um, I'm sure you have read it or seen it, that shows that yoga can lower stress, increase your strength, reduce um, back pain while providing you some gentle exercise. Um, therapeutic activities like yoga can complement cancer-fighting medical treatment and help to strengthen your body's immune system. There's actually one study that was done in 2013 out of Norway that found that regular practice of gentle yoga and meditation can have an effect in circulating cancer-fighting immune cells. So mindfulness meditation also can appear to help change the brain and immune function in positive ways, which is why we are doing our specialty series, our um, movement yoga flow. So this month we're inviting you to participate in a variety of different yoga methods. Um, we ask you to keep an open mind, open hearts, and to always listen to your body. So today's class is yoga for your hips, core, and your pelvic floor. And it will be led by me, Lizzie. So I'm grateful that you are all joining me today. Again, we will be predominantly on the floor for our yoga class. So you do wanna make sure that you have a yoga mat. Um, you wanna see if you have a towel handy. You might need that for your head. Um, and if you have yoga blocks, that would be great as well. I like to do yoga with uh, my bare feet. Um, so if you'd like to, you most certainly can take your shoes and socks off. It just allows you to grip your yoga mat a little bit better. So I'm also going to talk a little bit about the pelvic floor. The pelvic floor is basically a group of muscles that help to hold up our bladder and our organs um, and help to keep everything lifted. Over time, um, over life situations, having kids, um, different surgeries that we might have had, our pelvic floor tends to weaken. And so it might be more difficult and more challenging um, to keep everything up and to be lifted. So a lot of pelvic floor um, research and exercises have been done as of late. Um, and so a lot of it has to do with kegels or kegels. I'm not sure the exact way to say that. Um, and with breathing, which kind of correlates hand in hand with yoga. So when you do a Kegel, many of you probably know how to do it and maybe doing it correctly or incorrectly. I know that I used to think a Kegel was <gasps> something like that where you tried to, you know, engage all the muscles and think that, okay, that's it, I did it. Um, but a Kegel is very, very, very subtle. It's just a, almost like you're pulling and lifting up of your organs um, down there and you lift and pull everything up and you hold it and then you can release. So it kind of correlates with our breath. You want to exhale as you lift and inhale to relax. So you can be doing kegels while you're talking, you can be doing kegels while you're doing work. It's not a big intense movement. It's very subtle and very gentle. And it is something that we should be doing a couple times throughout the day. They recommend to do about 15 to 10, 10 to 15 reps throughout the day, maybe every hour, um, but you don't want to do too many because you can also overwork it because it's a muscle, right? You want to also make sure that you're giving it a little bit of a break. So you'll hear me talk a lot today about lifting and pulling up and then release and relax. So that's what I'm talking about. And if you do want more information, feel free to give me a um, phone call. I've recently become an expert on this topic, um, having had a couple of kids. Um, so feel free to, to let me know. All right, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna go ahead and lay down on our mats, flat to the floor, rest your head. Now, if you notice there's a big gap between your head and your shoulders, you may wanna take a yoga block and just rest your head like so, or a towel, or even a pillow. If you have a pillow, you can also do that as well. So I'll give you a few minutes to get comfortable. You can start with your knees bent, or you can keep them straight. Again, finding whatever is most comfortable for you, what position works for you. So we're gonna do a little analysis here. When we lie down on the floor, oftentimes our lower back starts to lift and arch. Throughout class today, I want you to focus on tilting your pelvis and your hips back so that your back, your lower back, is touching the floor. There shouldn't be that gap. You shouldn't be able to slide your hands underneath your low back. You want to push 
So your lower back is against the floor at all times. All right? When you do that, you engage the core abdominal muscles. It's very subtle, but you engage those core muscles. So I want you to take your hands down by your side, palms facing up. Again, knees can be bent or they can be straight. If you'd like to lengthen, excellent. And I want you to push your lower back into the mat and just breathe for me. Inhale through your nose, exhale through your mouth or through your nose. And when you exhale, I also want you to focus on lifting and pulling up from your pelvic floor up. And when you inhale, you relax and you release. Continue breathing. All right, from here, we're gonna do a little bit of a sun salutation, just using our arms still lying down on our backs, keeping our lower back pushed down into the mat. I'd like you to take your hands to prayer position, resting on top of your chest. Good, exhale, I want you to shoot your arms straight up overhead, above your chest. Inhale, you're gonna spread your arms out to the sides, making a T, so your hands rest down onto the floor. Exhale, we take our hands back above our chest. Inhale, we're gonna take the hands overhead, resting onto the floor above our heads. Feeling that stretch in our core. Exhale, shoot the arms straight up overhead. Inhale, open the arms out to a T. Exhale, arms go above the chest overhead. Inhale, arms overhead, reach and stretch like you just woke up. Exhale, back above the chest. Inhale, open to a T. Exhale, arms above the chest, up to the sky. Inhale, arms overhead. You can continue this in your own breath and at your own pace. Each time feeling that stretch in the chest, the back, the core. As you become more comfortable with this sun salutation, Focus on your breathing and lifting and pulling up of that pelvic floor as you exhale. Checking in on your back. Is your low back pushed into the mat? Wherever you're at, I'd like you to slowly bring your hands down into your chest in your prayer position. Good. Sliding your hands down by your side. Great. Opening up, we're going to do a hip opener. So keeping our legs straight, if you need to bend them at any time, you most certainly can. I'd like you to slowly pull your right knee into your chest, taking your hands and interlacing them and placing them right below your knee onto your shin. You wanna maintain a nice level of your hips. You don't wanna to tilt to one side. And again, that lower back is pushed into the floor. You're gently gonna pull that knee into your chest. Feeling that stretch, 
Holding it here, breathing. Slowly, you're going to take that right leg and you're going to shoot it back out, resting it on the floor. And we're going to switch to that left leg, bringing your left knee into your chest, interlacing those hands, pulling and pushing, bringing that knee closer to your chest, keeping the low back pushed into the, uh, into the mat, keeping the hips level, and as best you can, keeping that right leg straight. If you need to bend it, you certainly can. Breathe. Good, slowly extending that left leg, stretching it out. Good, we're gonna do that a few more times. So going at your own pace now and at your own flow, alternating legs, bringing the knee closer into the chest, feeling that stretch, keeping the body nice and long, the low back pushed into that mat, and the leg that's not bent, you wanna to try to keep it as straight as possible. Very nice. One more time on both sides for me here. And one last leg, if you're following along with me. Excellent job. So lengthening our legs, making them nice and straight, hands to the sides of our body. Again, we're pushing our lower back into that mat. If you notice that that's more difficult, you can always put a pillow underneath your neck or head so that you don't have quite an arch. Good. Next, we're gonna be going into some leg lifts. So we're gonna be keeping our legs straight and our foot flex. And all that means is our toes are not pointed like I'm pointing now. Our toes are gonna to point up to the ceiling or up to the sky if you're doing this outside, that's nice. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna slowly lift that right leg up, hovering it a couple inches above the floor. When you do this, again, hips should stay level. We wanna keep our back pushed into the mat. We don't want it to arch. And then you slowly bring that foot and that leg down. And then we switch. Left leg hovers and lifts, and slowly bring it down. Anytime I do this, and you can go ahead and alternate. Anytime I do this, I always feel like my legs feel like lead. There are a thousand pounds. Just when I do this exercise, even though it's such a subtle, small lift above the floor and above the ground. Good, and you wanna take it nice and slow. This is a great way to engage our core. Strengthen those legs and hips. Good, focus on your breathing. As you exhale, remember you want to pull and lift the pelvic floor up. Good. Slowly, I'd like you to bring both legs so they rest onto the mat for me. Very nice. From here, you're going to take your right leg, and I want you to lift it up as high as you feel comfortable, up towards the sky. Again, foot is flexed. If you need a gentle assistance, you can take your hands behind that leg where your hamstring is and just give it a gentle nudge towards you. Again, pushing our lower back into the mat, our hips stay level. And if you've used your hands to help you, go ahead and release them and slowly take that leg down to the floor. Nice and slow, control it, control the hips, keeping the back pushed into the mat. Very nice. Now on to the other side. Lift that left foot up, that left leg up as high as you can. If you need help, you can pull that leg in a little bit more with the hands. Good. And go ahead and release and slowly lower that leg down to the floor. Very nice. All right, keeping our lower back pushed into the back of the mat, keeping our legs straight here. One more time, we're gonna do a series of little leg lifts. So just a couple inches off of the floor, keeping that leg straight, lift and lower, alternating legs, 
lift and lower, keeping your hips level. If you feel like your hips are teeter-tottering, you can always put your hands on your hips to kind of self-assess. You want there to be a very, very minimal amount of movement coming from them. Good. Little lips here, almost there. Breathe. Very nice. Good. And relax those legs down to the floor. Wonderful. All right, from here we're gonna bend those knees, placing our feet flat to the floor. And I want you to walk your feet so that your heels come as close as you can to your glutes or to your bum, your bottom. And again, keeping that low back pushed to the back or to the mat. That's it. Excellent, you want your fingertips to point towards those heels. We are going to be doing some bridges. So targeting our back, our glutes, and our hamstrings. You're gonna push the weight into those heels as you lift and push your hips up towards the sky. So now there's a gap between your back, your glutes, and your legs, and the floor. And then you slowly bring those glutes, your back, to the floor. And then you shoot those hips back up. Taking this at your own breath and at your own pace. There's no right or wrong way to inhale or to exhale. I like to exhale as I lift and pull and lift my pelvic floor up and inhale as I release. But whichever way feels best for you. Again, taking it nice and slow. Very nice. Great, let's do one more lift and lower. Excellent. We're gonna go back into those mini bridges. This time, when we lift, we're gonna take, if you feel comfortable and are able to, you're gonna take your arms straight up overhead, reaching like you just woke up, lift, and then you slowly bring those arms back down to the sides of your legs as you lower those hips and those glutes down to the floor. So we lift, arms reach overhead, and then we bring the arms down and the hips and the glutes. Good. Sometimes we slide a little bit when we do this move. So if you need to take time to readjust, that's great. Lift. I'm about to slide off of my mat. Let's do one more here. Excellent job. All right, readjusting your feet, keeping the knees bent and the feet flat to the floor. Trying to bring your heels so they're closer to your glutes. We're gonna do another variety of our bridge here. Our variation is probably the better word. Um, it's called a butterfly bridge. So what you do is you hinge and push those hips up towards the sky. Then you're gonna slowly bring those hips down. As you do, you open up those legs into a butterfly. So the knees hover right above the floor. You open up the hips. You keep your feet in the same position. Normally in a butterfly, we bring those feet together because then you're gonna bring those knees back up and you're gonna go right back into that bridge. So bridge, we lower. Push the knees out, relax the hips. Good, bring the knees back up. And hinge those hips up, good. Be mindful of your lower back, keeping it pushed into the mat. Very nice, 
slow and controlled, especially when you do those butterfly, those open, opening up of the hips. Don't want to take that too fast. One more time here. Excellent, bring those knees back up. Now I want you to walk your feet together. And we're gonna do a traditional, traditional butterfly. You're gonna open up those knees, trying to get them as open as you can. So, the closer your heels are to your bottom, the harder and more you're going to feel that stretch. If you need to walk your heels away from your bottom, then you get a little bit of a less of a deep stretch, but it's less intense and it's a little bit easier for everybody. So, you can start with your feet farther away and then slowly walk them in. And I just want you to hold it here and breathe. Be mindful of your lower back. You want it to be pushed down into the mat and into the floor. Breathing, remember that pelvic floor. Exhale, we pull and lift up. Inhale, we relax. Good, slowly bring those feet flat to the floor, knees up towards the sky. From here, let's walk those legs or extend them straight out, stretching the body again. Pushing our lower back into the floor. Good, we're gonna do a lying figure four stretch. Oftentimes in our classes, we do it seated. Now we're gonna do it on the floor. I know for myself, I have to have a yoga block under my head. So make sure you have that handy if you need it. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to bend your left leg so your knees pointing up towards the ceiling. You're then going to take your right ankle and rest it on top of that left thigh, making your figure four. You can stay here, keeping your lower back pushed into the floor, and you can push that right hand on that knee, opening up that hip, or you can lift your left leg up, interlacing your hands and grabbing onto the back of your left leg and pulling your left leg in towards you. If you're able to see me, you can see that my neck has arched and lifted and that's just because I'm not able to push my shoulders down onto the mat. I have very tight shoulders and a tight chest. So I'm gonna put the yoga block there, which allows me to not strain my neck and still do the stretch comfortably. <clears throat> so be mindful of that. Good, breathe. Again, keeping your low back pushed into the back of the, uh, to the back of the mat. I keep wanting to say that into the mat. <laughs> Good. And I want you now to slowly put your left foot down onto the floor, uncross those legs, and we're going to switch. So now we keep our right foot flat, knee to the knee to the sky. We're going to bring that left foot across the body, resting the left ankle on top of the right thigh. Same thing, you can stay in this starting position here and just gently nudge that left knee. Or you can lift the right leg up, interlace those hands, and bringing and pulling that right knee in towards your chest, staying in that figure four position. Great job. And as I mentioned, you want to have your shoulders flat to the floor. I'm unable to show you a good demonstration of that because I'm unable to do it. 
which is why I should do more yoga. Breathe. Slowly lower that right foot down to the floor. Uncross those legs. Plant both feet now. Down to the floor. Good. Next we're going to be doing a pelvic tilt. It's a very, very small movement, but it's a great way to kind of see how you arch your back and how you push your back into that mat. So we want to start with our hands on our hips so we can kind of feel this movement. You want to push your lower back into the floor and almost like you're pulling or pushing your hips up towards the sky or back towards you. And then you're going to tilt your pelvis and your pelvic and your hips so that now there's a huge arch in that back and now we're trying to point our hips towards the tops of our legs or out in front of us. So you're going to alternate between that move, tilting it back towards you, pushing the back into the mat, then away from you, up and away, and you lift and arch that back. Good. This also gives you a really good sense of how you really do have to use the core muscles to push your back into that mat. tilts here. Don't forget about when you exhale, lifting and pulling up your pelvic floor. Good. Excellent. All right. Our lower back is pushed into the mat. We're now going to bring both knees into our chest. And we're going to take both of our hands and resting them on top of our shins. Good. I want you to pull your knees into your chest and just a nice little small rock side to side. Good. In yoga, they say this is a nice massage for your hips and for your lower back. Good. You can go in circles, you can go side to side, front to back, whatever feels best and most comfortable for you. All right, go ahead and plant those feet flat to the floor, knees to the sky. Great, we're gonna go ahead and roll over and go onto all fours. The next couple exercises involve us being on all fours. So we'll give you a few minutes to get into that position. Not a few minutes, a few seconds. All right, so Lord, we're in all fours. We want our hands to be above our shoulders and our hips to be above our knees. You want your knees and your legs to be hip distance apart and obviously your hands to be shoulder distance apart. All right, good. From here, we're gonna go into our cat-cow. So we inhale, we push the hips back and we lift the chest and tilt the chin up towards the ceiling. Then you exhale, you're gonna round the back, tuck the chin to the chest, lift and pull up on the pelvic floor. Good. I want you to alternate between these two moves at your own breath and your own pace.
All right, slowly, in whatever position you are in, you want to return to all fours, back flat. Excellent. Next, we're going to be going into a bird dog. We've often done this in a variety of our classes. So we're going to start very gentle, and then we're going to increase the, the movement and the, the range. So all we're going to do is we're going to take one hand, and we're going to lift it up off the floor, extending it straight out in front and then slowly bring that hand down and switching to the other side. When we do this, I want you to notice your hips. Are they staying pointing in the same direction or are you rocking to one side to get that arm up? You wanna keep your back nice and flat. If there was a glass of wine or coffee that you didn't want to be spilled on you, would you be able to hold it up with your back? Or are you rocking up quite a bit? If extending that arm up above is too hard, you can walk the hand forward and back. Good. Very nice. All right, next we're going to incorporate those legs. So my left arm is going to reach straight out in front. If I feel comfortable, my right leg is going to lift and extend straight back behind me. So opposite hand, opposite foot, and then I'm gonna bring it back down and place it onto the floor, onto the mat. Again, watch those hips, keeping that core engaged. If lifting that arm and the leg is not happening, lift the leg, walk the hand, and then walk it back. Again, taking it very slow. You really want to extend the leg, extend that arm, stretch, maintain that flat back. Good work. A few more times here. Very nice. Returning the hands and the feet to the mat and to all fours. Good. Next, we're going to be doing a side leg lift or a fire hydrant. So all you do is you keep your hands planted to the mat. You're going to lift up your left knee out and up to the side, keeping the knee and the leg bent, and then you slowly bring it down. And then you do the same thing on the other side. Again, watching the hips. You don't want to open up the hips so they're pointing to the the side, the leg that you're lifting, you want your hips to stay pointing towards the mat. So it might not be a very big or high lift, that's okay. Good. So side leg lift here, knees bent, lifting, trying to point that knee up and out to the side. I was taught that this exercise was called a dirty dog. If you imagine what dogs do. Then I soon realized that that probably wasn't very appropriate and learned that you can also call it a side leg lift. Good, one more time on each side for me. And Excellent. All right. So next, I want you to open up those legs so your hips or your knees go to about the width of your mat. You're going to bring your feet together. You're going to shift your hips back so they hover above those feet. And you're going to extend those arms out in front, resting your head onto the mat. Going into our child's pose here. This is a great way to rest and pause during yoga class. But it's also a great stretch for your back and for your hips. So I want you to breathe here. Next, we're going to be going into a little bit of a yoga flow to finish off our class.
always take your hands underneath your forehead, too, in your, in your down dog. No, your child's pose. <laughs> Good. All right, let's come up to all fours here. We're going to curl the toes underneath us. We're going to push our hips up and away, going into our down dog. Our hips are extended up towards the sky. We're trying to touch those heels to the floor, but we're not really able to do it, feeling that stretch. You can pedal those feet, bending one knee at a time. You want your head to be between those arms. Good. From here, we're going to shift the hands or the weight forward, resting them on top of our hands and our feet into a plank. Then we're slowly going to come down into our chaturanga, lowering ourselves down to the floor, uncurling the toes. We're going to push the hands, push ourselves up so our chest is lifted, going into a baby cobra. Good. Then from here, we lower ourselves down, curl the toes underneath, go back up into our down dog. Excellent. From here, I'd like you to step, hop, or walk your right foot forward so it comes between your hands and you're going to rest your left knee onto the floor. We're going into a runner's lunge or a low lunge. Very nice. Good. If you need extra support underneath that left knee, you can take a towel. Wonderful. You can either stay here in this position or if you're able to, you're going to place two hands on the tops of your right thigh. And you're going to push and fall a little bit deeper into this lunge, feeling that stretch in that left hip. Or you can have two yoga, mat, two yoga blocks here to help you. Slowly, you're going to take your two hands down to the floor. You're going to take that right foot back behind you, going to all fours. And you're going to shoot your hips back up into your down dog. Good. We're going to go forward into a plank, down to our chaturanga, lowering our chest and our thighs to the floor, uncurling those toes, lifting the chest up, baby cobra here. And slowly bring our chest back down to the floor, curling the toes underneath us, lifting, going back into our down dog. You're going to step, hop, or walk your left foot forward so it's between your hands, dropping your right knee down to the mat or to the floor. Runner's lunge or low lunge here. Good. You can place your hands on tops of your thighs. If you have yoga blocks, you can, you can hold on to them. Or you can keep your hands on the mat. You just really want to sink into that stretch, stretching that right hip. Good. You're going to slowly bring that left leg back to all fours. Going back into our down dog, lifting the hips, pushing your heels back. Going forward into our plank, chaturanga down. Uncurl the toes, baby cobra we lift. Bringing our chest back down, curling the toes underneath us, lifting our hips back up into that down dog. Good. We're going to drop to all fours here. We're going to do what's called a puppy pose. So we're going to keep our legs wide, as wide as the mat. We're going to keep our bottom lifted, and we're going to slowly rest our hands to the mat, our forearms to the mat, and rest our head on top of our arms. You can push those hips back, but you want to keep the hips lifted. Breathing here. You can kind of wiggle your bottom, feeling that stretch on different sides and deeper positions.
slowly coming back up to all fours. And you can go ahead and lie flat on your mat, on your back. Returning to our backs, lying flat on the mat here. Good. Keeping our lower back pushed into the mat for me. Eyes closed. Focusing on your breath. Inhale and exhale. Quieting your thoughts and your mind for a little bit. Allowing your body to relax after the work and the stretching that it's just done. Slowly awakening up the body, wiggling the fingers and the toes. And continue to keep your eyes closed or open them. Still lying flat on the mat, I'd like you to bring your hands into your heart center. Big inhale. Big exhale. I want to thank you for joining me for class today. I appreciate you all being here and hope that you return. And in closing, we say namaste. And slowly, you can open up your eyes and pull yourselves on up. Wonderful job, everybody. Hips, core, and pelvic floor. We did it. Hooray. I hope you all have a great rest of your day.